What's up, everybody? Richard from True Shot here, and today we're going to be doing a full album reaction and review to the brand new Termina record, Dysphoria. Now, I know this comes out on April 9th, but your boy got it early from the one, the only Nick Nocturnal. So this is going to be quite a little bit away from when I actually release this album review. So I'm, I'm really stoked because it'll allow me to, to do it, kind of stew on it for a while, and then return to it. Um... I'm stoked, man. I've checked out four of these tracks in the past, uh, three of which was on the Reaction Channel, one was before we did the Reaction Channel. So that is The Abyss, which we did on the Reaction Channel, Lucid, uh, no reaction to that, Desolate Spectre, and The Edge of Time. As always, we'll be grading each of these songs on a scale of 1 to 10 with uh, a full album grade at the end. I'm stoked to check this out. Uh, I have no idea what to expect. The other four tracks have been sick. Maybe Lu maybe Termin is one of my top albums of 2021. Here we go. Let's get into it. This is the first track, which is Fade Away. Full solo there. So that was Termina, Fade Away. Uh, listen, man, I thought this was just a very solid track. Um, great opener. Um, really, I really love the, the you know, the kind of uh, pitched down kind of um, 
monotone, uh, demonic type voice. I love that kind of stuff. Love, 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 love that kind of stuff. The chorus was cool. Um, you know, I just thought this was just a very well flowing, easy to listen to track. Um, I thought it was just super solid. I mean, that's kind of just the word that I keep coming back to. Lots of really great components, easy to listen to. Some fun little uh, things here and there, including, like I said, that uh, kind of demonic pitched voice, which I love that. I'm going to give Fade Away, I'm going to give this a solid 8. I thought it was a very solid track, above average, really fun to listen to track. But now let's go on next to The Abyss, which I have heard. sound just like Andy, as you just saw. So that was Termina, The Abyss. Now, this is a fantastic song. And I'll tell you why. Straight up, I'm going to be totally dead honest with you. And I know that, Nick, if you're watching this, I don't want you to be mad. I know you won't be mad. I'm joking. It's part, part of the joke. Um, I have not really listened to The Abyss since it really kind of came out. And I still remembered pretty much all the words. That right there is impressive. Especially for this genre. The chorus was on point. Rarely do I like three chorus tracks, but this one I thought delivered it in an awesome way. Um, even just like 
Like the vocal patterns during the verses are super catchy as well. Everything is just so sick. Um, I, I, I just, I have no choice. The Abyss gets a 10. I just, I freaking love that. I love that song. Love it. I forgot how much I loved it. Now, going back to listen to it again here is awesome. That, that was I, I, just speechless. Um, to have that kind of catchiness and in the, in the hookiness to be able to, for people to remember and sing along to the words after months and months and months of uh, you know not hearing it is very impressive. Um, it's something that does not happen in this genre very often. All right, let's go on now to Blood Echo. bad word. All right, so that was Blood Echo. 
Um, okay. Ah, oh, man. Um, this one really just wasn't for me. Um, there was some, there were some cool parts, uh, in here that I really liked. Um, I, you know, especially Andy's vocals, I thought really, um, were awesome, but I loved, you know, the, you know, the... listen, I got, I got to tell him if I, if I'm not a fan of a song, I can't help it. It's my kitty cat. He's objecting, I think. Um, especially like the fast rappy patterns. I thought that was cool. Um, but overall for me, there just wasn't enough, uh, change in terms of, I guess, just feel, um, and kind of like rhythm. Um, I was kind of hoping for it to kind of pick up a little bit. Um, maybe it was just a little bit too ambient for me. I like that kind of stuff, but kind of in doses. You got to remember who I am. I'm a, I'm a heavy kind of, I'm not, I wouldn't even say heavy, but more so just, um, I just need something that's going to get me moving, you know? And I think that the other songs, The Abyss and Fade Away and some of the other songs we've done reactions to as well have that factor, but this one just didn't have it for me. Uh, there was a lot, again, the vocals I thought were awesome, but I just, I just think in terms of the feel for the song, um, this is one that I would probably pass on. Um, so for me, I'm going to have to give Blood Echo probably a 6.5. Now, let's get into Suffocate. Yeah. 
right, so that was Suffocate. All right, so coming off of Blood Echo, uh, you know, this one definitely had a few more kind of, um, I guess, like uh, feel tempo changes in it, which I thought was awesome. I thought the chorus in this was very solid, um, really showcased Andy's higher register, I think, very well because it was almost like, it was almost like um, his voice kind of really stood center in like, um, obviously there was other stuff going on around it, but the voice on this track really came through more than others from what I recall, um, you know, including the ones that we've already checked out. Um, I like this more than Blood Echo. I'm kind of like, I don't know if I liked it more than Fade Away. It's kind of close for me. Um, I think I think I'm going to go probably about a 7.5 on this one. Um, I think for me, there were some cool changes in here, cool chorus, but I was kind of waiting for, um, you know, what, you know, that big kind of build up moment. Uh, I really like, again, the chorus was sick. Um, the, the, the changeups were cool. The vocal patterns were there. Uh, this definitely had a little bit more, um, to, for, for me, uh, personally than blood echo, but I think I liked fade away a little bit more still. Um, now we're going to go to Lucid, which was their very first single, which they dropped, like, I don't even know when. It was 2019, I believe, that they dropped it. Let's go back and revisit this. This is going to be fun. I wonder if they made any uh, changes for, like, an album version.
That's what I'm talking about right there. That was Lucid. The very first track under the term and the name. Now, what I really liked about this one is, was there a lot of changes kind of instrumentally? No, but what they established was like that kind of chuggier, gentier kind of feel. But it worked so well for the track, um, especially some other areas in there, uh, especially like when Andy... It was almost like his vocals were off time from uh, the, the instrumental, which I don't know if it was. I have to go back again, but it just felt that way. And it was just like, it was just like, as it was like almost as like the, the, the kick came down, the vocals, came, like, I don't know. There was something about it, man, where it was just so cool. Um, just kind of kept, kept you like, I don't know. It was so cool. It's That's one of those things. That's what's really cool about doing these reactions is that sometimes I'm not able to articulate what I'm thinking, and that's just a good thing because it's just so cool. It's so unique. It's so interesting that I really love it. The chorus in this is sick. Um, the buildups are cool. Uh, man, I'm just – let me think. I, I got to do it, man. I just love this track too. We're going with another 10 here for Lucid. Let's move on to – Servant of Death. So it was Servant of Death. I should have known by the title that we were about to get heavy. Man, that was like a mix of... That was like a mix of uh, reflections in a mirror. 
um, just a super like thal or tall. How how are you pronounce? I think it's thal. T h a l l. You got like that sound in there, but you got the 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 Amura kind of rhythm to it. There were some sections I just wish it was a little bit bouncier that it would have really given it that really cool effect. Um, but man, oh my god. That was so good. That might have been first listen. It might have been one of my favorite tracks so far. <sighs> no, dude. I'm going to go 9.5 on that one. I just, I loved that. Damn, should I go 10? I don't know. Should I try 10? I think I'll keep it at the 9.5. Because what I would do probably is give Lucid the 9.5 and then this the 10. So either way, it'll work out. Uh, you know, I'll just make it formal. We'll do this 10. We'll do this 9.5. This is what happens when you're doing these, like, you know, you're filming these. I'm not going to edit this, okay? You guys are going to see me go through the motions here. That song was just absolutely gnarly. I mean, had the, the it was like, like I said, it was like Reflections in a Mirror, but with Andy's fun, unique vocals. Um, so here we go. Let's go to Meharu. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Welcome back. I want to hear that in the beginning again. Hold on.
That was Miharu. Yo, that song. I'll say this. The chorus in a vacuum was fine. I just don't think the song needed it. However, the rest of that, holy God. Like, oh my God. I'm going to go 9.5 on that one. Just because I thought the chorus was fine, but I don't think the song needed it, man. That, it was almost like some Ice Nine Kills kind of just like uh, creepiness in there. I loved that. Oh, man. God damn. All right, let's go on to Eras of the Past. What do we got here, boys? So that was Eras of the Past. 
Now, obviously, this was kind of a more uh, emotional track, as uh, you, you know, you could gather. What I really liked, and what a lot of bands tend to do when they do something like this, is that they tend to kind of go a little bit poppy, I guess, in the choruses. But what I really liked about this is that they, the verses were, you know, a little bit heavier, and then the choruses kind of allowed the the music to breathe a little bit more, and it kind of came down, which I really liked. Um, around like that three minute mark where it came down and then came back in, which we'll play. I want to try to find that again. Hold on. Yeah, that right there, I would have almost liked it if it went like. Over. Be like, you know, just give it like that extra second or two or three seconds ish something like that to kind of really let people kind of sit and then just come back in with like a room you know what i mean i thought i think that would have been cool but i really like how they um they 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 kind of went from almost one extreme to the other in terms of keeping it uh you know a little bit more aggressive in the verses and then coming down in the choruses kind of and then andy's vocals obviously did it did wonders i thought this was a really cool track i i really like how they did it because i'm not really a fan of like that in between sound i guess like i really like it when it's either you know amped up or brought down and i thought this song did both it wasn't poppy or anything like that um which i don't know i'm very picky when it comes to choruses i don't know why i just there's something about them um that i'm very picky about but i i think that this one delivered i'm gonna go probably about in eight on this one i think an eight is probably uh where i'll stamp hat here we go it's heavy time desolate specter here we go
get the ring out here. All right, so that was Termina, Desolate Spectre. Listen, man, I to me, before hearing the other two tracks, Servant of Death and also Maharu, uh, this was a really cool, heavy track. I like those ones more now after listening to, to the full album, but this one's still sick. I think what this one offers is kind of like that death metal kind of... It's like death metal and hardcore, which I guess you would say deathcore at that point. It has that feel, but it also has like a super catchy chorus, uh, even for, you know, a scream uh, chorus, uh, in, you know, like a kind of a more aggressive chorus as well. And I think that's really uh, attributed to Andy's ability to kind of... His, uh, the articulation and the cadence on his voice is very easy to, to, to flow with, to understand. And I really like Desolate Spectre a lot. Um, I'm going to give this one a 9. We had two tracks left, including one that we did a reaction to. So let's see how this album finishes up. This is very exciting. This is this is exactly what I've been waiting for. It's like, it's like Stephen A. Smith from ESPN. This is exactly, and I don't mean to sound like Cat Williams. This is exactly what I've been waiting for. Here we go. This is Moribund. <laughs> guitar So that was moribund. Um, 
I really like this one, and because I mean, obviously, you will, will notice at the time of watching this, but there's a song uh, that after our next song that True Shot's coming out with that really this song reminded me a lot of um, in certain parts. I'm um, just kind of like the 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 general feel, I suppose. So there you go. It was a really really spoiler for everybody. Um, what I really liked about this one is that it reminded me a lot of eras of the past, just minus the more heavier verses. This is kind of was mellow throughout. Um, you know, had like that Guns N' Roses style solo. I just really appreciated this track a lot. Um, very heartfelt. And I think I'm going to go the same with eras of the past. I just, uh, this is just a nice chill, emotional song that I can really appreciate a lot. Again, it's it's one extreme or the other for me. It's very well established at this point, so I'm going to stop reiterating that. But that was just a very nice, pleasant, relaxing track. Uh, very heartfelt as well. And uh, I think that was a job well done. So here we go. The Edge of Time, the final track on the Terminal record. And I'm excited to check it out again because I just did like four days ago. Here we go. The snow white mountains and the... Oh, however it goes. First listen, I give this a 9.5, so we'll see. starts. Are you ready, kids? Damn. 
So hearing this again, I really appreciate the chorus uh, more. Um, hey, you know, my, you know. it was almost it was it was like the rhyming schemes, um, the, the 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 vocal uh, phrasing. Uh, I like the. Hey, you know, my, you know, my, you know. It's just really cool. It's just a fun, catchy melody. Um, and uh, obviously the heavy moment is still just awesome. I'm going to stick with my same score, which was a 9.5. There's no reason to go down, and there's no reason to go up. That's where I. That's just where I feel. That is the number that I get. I know that Adam gave it a 10. Um, but there are the still courses that I like more, but I do appreciate it more listening to it again. So now let's pull up the calculator. This is going to be an interesting one because I have no idea where we're going to end up because there's some some fun scores throughout this. So let's go. We got 8, 10, 6.5, 7.5, 9.5, 10, 9.5, 8, 9, 8, 9.5. Divide that by 110. 86.87%. Damn, that is right there with error. That is right there. So close. It's right there, though. That's awesome. Because this, to me, when it comes to to this track, uh, no, to, not to this track, when it comes to this album, um, what I really appreciate is especially the heavy moments. I think that Nick really delivers some very solid, groovy instrumental, and Andy's vocals just complement it so well. Um, I think, obviously, you know, we'll go through these here. Uh, my favorite three tracks... I would say, I would say number three. I'm gonna try to look over here just to make sure I have the. Uh, just wanted to jump back in real quick uh, as I'm editing this. I noticed that I set them out of order. I just want to make sure I get the right order correct, and I wrote them down. So let me pull it up. Do one through one through eleven. We'll make it. We'll make it easier. Servant of Death, The Abyss, The Edge of Time, Maharu, Lucid, Desolate Specter, Errors of the Past, Fade Away, Moribund, Suffocate, and then Blood Echo. My least favorite was Blood Echo, and I, and I think um, you know that that's on there and Suffocate. Those were kind of, in my opinion, obviously if you're looking at my scores, they, those were kind of like I don't want to say the weaker links, but they just the, the sonically just weren't for me. Um, I know people will appreciate those style of songs, but um, they just they just weren't for me, and that's okay. You know, not every song is going to be, but man, oh man, like I enjoyed the the a fistful of this album. I mean, this was so sick. Um, Hearing songs like Servant of Death and Maharu for the first time was awesome. I can't wait to go back and watch my own reaction. I never I never do that, but I just want to see myself uh, soaking in that. And obviously, like I said, at the time of this, this is March 26th, so I still got a little bit, two weeks to go. Um, and also, by the way, at the time that you're watching this, you'll have already found out that uh, we are releasing a song on the same day as this album, which that's, that's a tough competition. But hey, you know what? It's all it's all good. We're all here to support each other, and that's what really matters. So Nick and Andy, Termina, well done. I mean, this is freaking outstanding. And, um, you know, I grade them tentatively, and then we kind of have our award show. So I'm looking forward to going back again and really pinning down how I feel because 87% is, is I think, Eric got an 88%. Um, so, th I mean... This is awesome, man. I'm very, I'm very, very stoked for you guys, and I hope that everybody else enjoys this album as much as I did. But anyways, there you have it. There are my thoughts and all else to Termina's debut record. Remember, debut record, Dysphoria. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you later. Peace.